Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Empowering Innovation. I extend a special welcome to Her Highness Sheikha Moza bint Nasser, Chairperson of Qatar Foundation, and Her Excellency Sheikha Hend bint Hamid Al Thani, Vice Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer of Qatar Foundation. Without their vision and leadership, none of what we are showcasing during this event would have come to pass. My name is John McIntyre, and I will be your host for this two-day event. For those of you who do not know me, I am the Director of Industry Development and Knowledge Transfer, or IDKT for short. I joined the Qatar Foundation in 2013 at the initiation of the Intellectual Property and Technology Transfer Office. Then I was involved in the development of Qatar Foundation's first intellectual property policy and technology transfer processes. IDKT is designed to support Qatar Foundation research development and innovation, meet its part in Qatar Foundation's endeavors to enhance Qatar's innovation ecosystem in alignment with Qatar National Vision 2030. IDKT has three core functions, intellectual property management, innovation training and recognition, and commercialization and licensing. Our team of experts protect and market technologies, find partners, and license QF-owned intellectual property around the globe. It's my privilege to welcome you here this afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Empowering Innovation is a celebration of Qatar Foundation's 25 years of driving innovation and entrepreneurship, fostering social development and culture of lifelong learning, as well as preparing bright minds to tackle tomorrow's biggest challenges. During this event, we will showcase Qatar Foundation's excellence in research development and innovation. And here, our leaders speak about some of Qatar Foundation's recent milestones in innovation and what's in store for the future. One of the highlights of today's proceedings is the unveiling of the virtual wall of innovation, on which will hang close to 80 patents awarded to Qatar Foundation in recent years based on technologies developed by some of our brilliant inventors. We'll also be presenting awards for Distinguished Creator of the Year, Distinguished Inventor of the Year, Innovation of the Year, as well as recognizing key contributors for licensing and commercialization activities in the past years. On the second day of this event, we will highlight Qatar Foundation's innovation ecosystem and the RDI actors within this vibrant community who provide solutions, services, and expertise to benefit the local industry and public sector. Indeed, there is much QF has to offer. We will also host a high-powered panel discussion where distinguished leaders and experts will discuss why it's important to focus on technology maturation and commercialization activities in order to deliver more impactful results. It's my pleasure to now introduce you to our first speaker. He leads the research, development, innovation, and commercialization initiatives across Qatar Foundation, which involves the Qatar Science and Technology Park, research institutes at HBKU, and many other research entities. Please welcome the Vice President for Qatar Foundation Research Development and Innovation and Vice President for Research at Hamad bin Khalifa University, Dr. Richard O'Kennedy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to welcome you to Empowering Innovation, a celebration of the pivotal milestones in Qatar Foundation's 25 years of nurturing innovation. Before I proceed, I would like to acknowledge Her Highness Sheikha Moza bin Nasser, Chairperson of Qatar Foundation, Her Excellency Sheikha Hind bin Hamad Al Thani, Vice Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer of Qatar Foundation, Mr. Wesley Blakes Lee, who is our distinguished keynote speaker, my fellow scientists, inventors, researchers, Qatar Foundation's innovation partners, startups, and SMEs as well as the local and international corporations who are participating in this two-day virtual event. Thank you for joining us. Our unusual circumstances are pushing us to adopt new ways of doing things. I am delighted that we can host this event and celebrate the success of our far-reaching endeavors, 
with the aid of 21st century technology, an example of how innovation can help us move beyond challenging circumstances. Innovation is vital for modern societies to function efficiently and an absolute necessity in achieving national and global sustainable development goals. The complex challenges the world faces today, such as climate change, growing chronic diseases, and expanding socioeconomic disparities, cannot be addressed without novel ideas, ingenious processes, and disruptive technologies. Carter Foundation acknowledges this reality and for the last two and a half decades has been instrumental in nurturing Qatar's innovation ecosystem with a keen focus on addressing national priorities and providing impactful solutions to society's many challenges. The Research, Development and Innovation, or DI landscape at Qatar Foundation encompasses infrastructure, talent and policy with actors spanning academia, technology, entrepreneurship and healthcare. This structure enables the efficient exchange of knowledge, skills, and techniques, which fosters the development of the scientific community and economic growth. Through the RDI activities of institutions such as Hamad bin Khalifa University, including its research institutes and its colleges, and QF partner universities such as Texas A&M University at Qatar, Virginia Commonwealth University School of the Arts in Qatar, and Wild Cornell Medicine Qatar, QF is bringing novel ideas and products into the global marketplace. In addition, Qatar Science and Technology Park has a full range of support mechanisms, including the new Technology Venture Fund, to enhance innovation and commercialization. In this event, we will showcase 80 international patents granted to Qatar Foundation in recent years. These are the results of many research projects and collaborations, and testaments to Qatar Foundation's unrelenting efforts to support the development of solutions to national and global challenges. We will also honour those who have made invaluable contributions to Qatar's RDI ecosystem through their breakthrough ideas, their products and processes, that have potential to improve lives. But in the year that marks the 25th anniversary of Qatar Foundation, this event is designed not just to look back, but to look forward with an even stronger determination to encourage and inspire more accomplishments. QFRDI has a range of support mechanisms in place to help those who are inventing and innovating, such as our innovation coupon and the more intro recently introduced innovation fellowship and entrepreneurial leave. Innovation Coupon provides funding to local SMEs and startups that need to solve specific problems related to developing their technology-rich product or service. Meanwhile, the Innovation Fellowship enables QF researchers to help make technologies less risky and more market-ready before startups are launched from the development of business plans and the generation of market leads to developing demonstration prototypes. It is complemented by the Entrepreneurial Leave Program, where QF research staff support startups with the smooth transfer of technology and knowledge to increase the commercial potential of their product and service by providing consultation to the licensees. And as QF RDI looks to support our partners in the private sector, I am also delighted to announce that our industry development and knowledge transfer arm, the organizer of this event, has developed a new searchable website and complementary tools in the form of guidebooks designed to assist you in working with our researchers, inventors, and entrepreneurs. With these initiatives and numerous others, empowering people to invent and innovate, I am confident that we will see more patents and better solutions to national and to global challenges. On behalf of Qatar Foundation Research, Development and Innovation, I am happy to celebrate our QF inventions and creators for their great achievements and I'm proud to announce the virtual wall of innovation as another important milestone resulting from all the work that has been done by all our stakeholders. This virtual wall of innovation showcases world-class granted patents recognized from 12 countries and jurisdictions. The wall is a great testimony of QF infrastructure and activities 
which are enabling local innovations to achieve global impact. We present this wall of innovation to you today and offer an open invitation to join us in harnessing those innovations to address and overcome our global challenges and make the world a better place for our future generations. Dr. Richard, we thank you for your inspiring words and your unstinting support in helping transform high-quality research results into meaningful applications that benefit society. Our next speaker has an extensive real-world experience in using intellectual property and technology transfer in the development of innovation ecosystems. He was the executive director of Johns Hopkins University Technology Transfer for close to a decade, and prior to that, he was the university's legal counsel dealing with intellectual property matters. He's a close collaborator and advisor of IDKT in matters related to intellectual property and entrepreneurship policies that are vital to the innovation ecosystem in Qatar Foundation. Here to give us his view on what we have done with the policy development and more importantly, where that places Qatar Foundation in the development and progress of its innovation ecosystem. I'm delighted to welcome our distinguished keynote speaker, Mr. Wesley Blakesley. Hello, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to present to you today. I'm Wes Blakesley. I have 40 years of experience in IP licensing and development. I'm a former NASA engineer, and about five years ago, I retired as the head of the Johns Hopkins University Office of Technology Transfer. Today, I serve as a consultant um, for companies, governments, and universities around the world uh, with regard to development of intellectual property and creating an innovation ecosystem. I've been working with Qatar this year on revising the QFIP policies. And the reason we do that is the a good IP policy is central to a successful innovation economy, and QF is creating policies that will promote disclosure and development of IP uh, in QF and in Qatar by first incentivizing the creators of the IP as well as their institutes. And, and you do that by sharing the revenue, by giving recognition to your creators of IP. You all, it's also developing wonderful resources for IP evaluation and development. You know, your Office of Industry Development and Knowledge Transfer is a very experienced office 
that, that takes the inventions that come in and the new disclosures of intellectual property and develops those and gets them out and gets them commercialized. These very important you know, policies and programs to help you develop early stage property. These policies also give you the agility to adapt and structure appropriate licensing agreements and, and to make this process work. Right now, QF is developing a very robust innovation ecosystem. But in reality, it's just beginning. It's maybe 10 years old. I think the current uh, IDKT management has been around about 10 years, seven years. I was actually out there 10 years ago when this first got started uh, to give some advice and, and provide some insight. And, and it's very exciting to me to have this opportunity to come back and see all the things that you've done in that period of time. You created the research and development institutes. You now have branch campuses from major world-class universities there, right there in, in, in Qatar. Um, you've created research and innovation hubs and created rules around those hubs to make them successful. You also have your own internal structures in place. QNRF has able funding offices uh, with very adept people and, and the funding agreements are industry standard, um, which makes them easier to get and more tolerable for the people getting the funding. And again, I mentioned before, IDKT has skilled knowledge transfer professionals. You know, there's some steps that you that that you'll want to take to improvement for improvement to to move this matter these matters forward. First, of course, is finalize the new policies because you know, we've worked on them for a long time to try to get things right to make things work the best. You need to embrace entrepreneurial activity. It's it's difficult when when you haven't done it, particularly you know, uh, for, for governmental or government related entities to do this because they, they operate by a different set of rules than the typical entrepreneur operates, you know, for a reason, uh, because it's the nature of that business. But, but you need to adopt a business minded approach that gives you the flexibility and the adaptability to move quickly in, in this rapidly developing market. The second thing you need to do is understand your business and business focus. And, and I could have put five or 10 things on this slide. I picked four out. And if you looked at these, you're gonna say, well, I wanna do all of those things. And of course you do you wanna do all of those things. When I was, when I was uh, at Johns Hopkins uh, Tech Transfer and leading that office and people asked me, well, what's the most important thing you do? I always said it was faculty service because because the purpose of a university tech transfer office is generally to make sure that the university can attract the best and brightest to the institution. And it, it's not, not that beneficial to have the best and brightest if you don't allow them to work and you don't reward their activities. And so part of the, part of the reason to have a good office is to, is to get them to disclose so you have something to sell. And it also makes a difference on how, on how you measure measure your success and how you how you perform your operations uh, for example service and accessibility to industry if that's number one maybe you provide your services free of charge if revenue production is number one uh, then you charge for your services so the way you operate depends on how you decide is the most important thing to you another thing you can do for improvement is to make sure that you understand that people are your most important product one of my favorite business books is Good to Great by Jim Collins. And, and in that book, he talks about companies that were good companies for many, many years, but found a way to move from being good companies to great companies. And one of the, the most important things that he found, what the differentiation was, was to get the right people on the bus. And especially if you're talking about tech transfer, you not only need the right people, but you need the right number of people. Uh, QF has a great core team. It needs equally great support but it needs a recognition that the work in this area is done by the people you hire and and the best thing you could do is hire the best people get out of their way let them do their jobs and of course you know in addition to doing positive things to move yourself forward you want to avoid those things that can interfere with your success and one of the big ones is under underfunding uh, you know it's, it, it is a known fact that you cannot shrink your way to success and, and it, this, these are tough times. I understand that. You know, this COVID thing has, has, has hurt countries, it's hurt individuals, it's hurt businesses. You know, money's tight with everybody. But right now, QF is at the point of inflection 
where because you've put in all this good work for all these years, you are ready to, to have an increase. You've already seen an increase in invention disclosures and in activity. I predict in, in the next year or two, you're going to see you know, a, a strong growth in startup companies. And, and with these things comes increasing costs of development. And so you have to be aware of underfunding um, your, your projects and making sure that you put the resources in that you need to be successful. Um, and then the last thing you need to avoid is unrealistic expectations. The innovation economy is hard. Early stage IP development takes time. Discovery needs the best and brightest. They need an incentive to disclose. It takes time and money to develop. So patience and perseverance is required. And, and you need to understand that go again, because you know some things like biomedical products can take 15 years, 15 years from the time you get the disclosure to the time you see any product hit the market. And most of those things aren't successful. So you're filing patents, you're doing, you're, you're, you're supporting companies, you know, you see them doing the work and then nothing comes out of it. It's easy to get discouraged. You have to understand how the innovation economy works and how development of early stage intellectual property takes place so that, you know, you can stay the course, have that patience and have that perseverance and, and, and you will be rewarded because QF has everything you need and you've got the right people to move those things along. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to be with you. I hope I'll be able to stay involved as you gain success in the future. Thank you, Mr. Blakesley, for that enlightening message. Building on the momentum generated by these truly inspiring and thought-provoking messages, I take this opportunity to share with you some information about IDKT's processes dealing with inventions and other creative works, as it will help our audience understand the context and importance of the recognition and awards that will be announced today. QF affiliated researchers are required to report their research results in the form of an invention disclosure report, IDR for short. IDKT receives a wide array of technologies from very diverse sectors. There is much variety from the whole of QF RDI. After recording these IDRs, IDKT's professionals assess the findings for patentability, marketability, and ownership to determine the most appropriate way to protect the intellectual property. Patents, which cover inventions, are well known, but copyrights and trade secrets are also important. Patents protect inventions that do something of a physical nature. These must be proven to be completely new and not obvious to someone experienced in the field. Copyrights, on the other hand, protect original creative works, software, and visualizations like maps. Trade secret is like the Coca-Cola recipe. It stays secret as long as the owner doesn't divulge the information. IDKT works within each of these forms of IP to formulate something we can eventually license. However, protection is not the only aspect of what IDKT does. Another thing that needs to be done to the technology as it is reported to IDKT is to develop it into a higher level of technical readiness. Companies are generally not too keen on technologies that are not matured to a state where they can close, become close to being a product. So we employ different maturation tools such as our technology development fund that provides support to build prototypes to demonstrate the technology's capabilities. We also have the Innovation Fellowship, which Dr. Richard O'Kennedy mentioned in his opening talk, that supports the development of business models and lead generation for marketing, partnering, and licensing. After we've worked on the prototype and marketing plans, we can then market the technology to find a partner. Once found and verified, we negotiate with the company a mutually beneficial license. Now that you've been introduced to patented inventions, copyrighted creations, and licensable technologies that lead to innovations, it's time to recognize our inventors and innovators who have made significant contributions to Qatar Foundation's RDI ecosystem.
Our project is uh, a logging tool that is used for uh, natural gas excavation and uh, it's inserted into the ground right after drilling. الأنتينا خلال المئة سنة الماضية كانت تعتبر أنصر في المنظومة الاتصالات غير قابل للتغيير من أول ما يصمم إلى أن يصنع غير قابل للتغيير الآن أصبح في إمكانية لبرمجته بالحواسيب One of my major interest is to develop green biocides or water disinfection agents uh, for water treatment and also for oil and gas uh, applications. Uh, my invention is creating a new material which is light and strong for thermal insulation in buildings and uh, aerospace and uh, other industries. مشروع هو عبارة عن روبوت مؤذن باختصار يعني. So we solved uh, the problem is that if you have, if I show you some data and you see or some report. And you see that there are some errors in the data. There's something that you don't really uh, recognize or you don't like. So we help you find the provenance, why you see this data, and explain why you see this error in the data, and give you the provenance, where did this error are coming from. This is very important because it can help you direct your effort to those, uh, the, uh, the sources of the errors. So uh, the research, uh, the invention started with a research uh, fund from Qatar National Research Fund. And we uh, started the research uh, aiming at uh, producing this material and uh, making this material stronger and also cutting the processing time which takes from weeks to months to produce. So these two ideas were the driving uh, force in this research to, uh, to achieve this invention. Uh, there are similar products on the market uh, from other competitors. Uh, they, in, in a way that they serve the same purpose or they are, are used for the same purpose, but they do not achieve the same results as our product. The beginning, it was a bit, uh, um, I mean, if you are a researcher, you are not used to this kind of language that you get from those people. And also you have, uh, you have this feeling that, you know, I know better than those guys. Why they are saying that I didn't uh, do this or this is not new and so on and so forth. So you had to decipher the language they give you and what, why they don't, they didn't, they are objecting to your uh, uh, invention. So, and then, I mean, in the beginning it was a little bit hard, but I think we got used to it and then, so I, I, after a while, so we, we learn how to, to respond to those uh, questions for the, from the examiners. The process to get the patent was somehow challenging for us, uh, because for, for our team it was the first time to apply for a patent. And uh, on the other hand, uh, our product is uh, an enhancement over the currently existing products on the market. And these products were developed by a handful of companies that own the majority of the, of the international IPs. So this is why there were lots of questions from the patent office. So uh, our, our membranes, 2D nanomaterial based membranes, is expected to improve the uh, anti-fouling uh, aspects and also to be a temperature uh, uh, tolerant. So we are hoping that these uh, 2D nanomaterial membranes can uh, uh, find its way in the market as a replacement of the conventional membranes that can uh, uh, improve actually the water uh, uh, membrane desalination process in Qatar. When we received the patent, we were very excited and uh, we considered it as a scientific and industrial validation to what our team was working on. الحمد لله يعني هذه مش أول وحدة لكن دائما لما تكون عندك دور في تغيير حياة الناس فيها شعور جميل جدا. So once we go into this final stage, it's very exciting for us. Of course, this is not the end of it. Once the, f the patent is granted, then we have to find the market for it. So this is another uh, process that we have to we have to go through. هي الفرحة لحظية لحظية أن لفرحة الناس اللي فرحوا لي لكن في نفس الوقت حسيتها مسؤولية 
when you do research, so there are a lot of ways that you, your research is recognized. Of. The first thing is that you see your research, you do the, the, uh, the experiment and you see that what you are doing really work. And then you go and maybe publish it in a top conference and then it is active. This is a, and now you have a pattern, it means that there is a, a, a value beyond the, the research outcomes and there is possibility to commercialize your uh, invention and your research. And you get those nice plaques, black, so, which is very nice. <laughs>
it is executed. This process takes months and sometimes years. I would now like to recognize the 13 key contributors groups for the year of 2020. The licenses they have supported cover the period of the 1st of January 2018 to the 30th of June 2020. These QF key contributors have put in substantial and generous efforts to ensure successful licensing of inventions or creative works for commercial purposes, based on crucial activities like vital knowledge and technology transfer activities, marketing of invention or creative works to find third-party licensees, license negotiations, license agreement drafting, and the relationship development and potential venture funding for startups. We also recognize those who have contributed to our commercialization efforts. The following video will showcase IDKT's licensing activities and our key contributors for this year. Please refer to the event booklet for more details. Thank you very much, Abir, for recognizing the key contributors. Ladies and gentlemen, with the presentation of these awards and recognitions, we conclude the first day of empowering innovation. Day two, tomorrow, will begin with a panel discussion tackling the theme of how to accelerate development of Qatar's innovation ecosystem through enabling policies and systems to fill inherent gaps and enhanced support of technology maturation. Don't miss this high-powered panel discussion, which will feature leaders and experts of Qatar's innovation landscape. Following the panel, we will showcase the services and expertise available through Qatar Foundation Research Development and Innovation for the industry as well as the public and private sector locally and around the world. Thank you once again for joining us on this momentous occasion, and we look forward to welcoming you all tomorrow. Thank you.